Hi, it's Shaw McMT. Today we're going to discuss the three major stress hormones, adrenaline, norepinephrine, and cortisol. A very brief, inter a very brief introduction to them. Tomorrow, I will go more in depth into cortisol. The sympathetic nervous system is what's responsible when we encounter stress. It's known as the fight or flight response. So, for example, if you get an email late at night from your boss, it's similar to a lion being out on the loose and coming after you. What's behind what we feel physically and mentally is the working of many hormones. And that's what I'm going to get into today. The first hormone is adrenaline. Adrenaline is actually commonly known as the fight or flight hormone. When people talk about fight or flight, they're usually referring to adrenaline. And adrenaline is a hormone produced by the adrenal glands once the brain tells the glands, hey, there's a stressful situation at hand. Now, adrenaline, along with norepinephrine, which I'll talk about next, is largely responsible for the immediate effects, stuff that happens right then when a stressful situation faces you. For example, um, you're driving on a highway peacefully and you want to make a lane change. As you look in your blind spot mirror, you're about to change, you're starting to change, and then you see a car coming at 70, 80, 90 miles an hour alongside of you. So you quickly move back to your lane. At that moment, the immediate reaction that happens often is an increased heart rate. Your muscles tend to tense up, breathing is faster, and oftentimes you're sweating. Now that is adrenaline for you. Adrenaline also provides the energy that you may need to escape a situation. If you had to suddenly veer the other way, that would be adrenaline and also it helps you to focus during these stressful times. That's adrenaline. The next hormone is norepinephrine, which is a hormone similar to adrenaline in that it's also released from the adrenal gland, also due to the brain telling it to. The primary role of norepinephrine, similar to adrenaline, is arousal. When you're stressed, you become more aware, awake, more alert, more focused you are generally just more responsive. Norepinephrine also helps to move blood from the areas that you may not need it during a stressful time. If there's a stress, you don't necessarily need blood flowing to your skin, or you don't need blood to help you digest. You need blood potentially at your muscles. So norepinephrine helps blood flow go to where you may need it most during a stressful time. So all these hormones are increased and what's interesting is that depending on what the stressor is and how you respond and react to stress, the levels can take maybe 30 minutes to normalize or they can take a couple days to normalize. So it's something that really affects our bodies. The next hormone is cortisol. Cortisol is known as the stress hormone. Cortisol is also produced by the adrenal glands, a little more complex than the other two. It takes a little longer to feel the effects of cortisol, whereas adrenaline, norepinephrine can immediately, within seconds, be released. Cortisol takes a few minutes. So to release cortisol, it's really a multi-step process. First, there's an area of the brain called the amygdala, and it has to recognize that there's a stressful situation. The amygdala then sends a message to another area of the brain called the hypothalamus. And the hypothalamus releases CRH, which stands for corticotropin releasing hormone. And that tells the pituitary gland to release another hormone called ACTH, adrenocorticotropic hormone. That goes to the adrenal glands, and then that at the adrenal glands, the adrenal glands is the place where cortisol is actually released. What happens is if you continuously dwell on a problem or you have constant stress, 
or there's stressful situations happening all the time, which is very common nowadays, our body is in a constant state of producing cortisol. Instead of producing cortisol during stressful times, because we're stressed as our baseline, it's constantly secreted in our bodies. And what this does is it actually, um, when we have too much of it, it suppresses many functions of our body that we need. For example, it can suppress the immune system. It can increase blood pressure. It can increase, increase blood sugar. Um, it can decrease sex drive. It can produce acne. It can contribute to obesity. It can do all sorts of things to our body that we don't want it to. And that is because we have this chronic level of cortisol um, there. Now, tomorrow I'm going to go a lot more into cortisol, but I just wanted to give you an introduction into some of the hormones that are involved in the stress response. Now, there are other hormones involved in the stress response. There's um, serotonin, dopamine, even testosterone and estrogen. So there's a lot going on. Um, but I hope this was a good introduction, and tomorrow we will dwell even more into it. This is Shamak MD from ShamakMD.com.